Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a bunch of really big stories for you, but don't worry, I should be able to get through them fairly quickly. That's why I actually did this style video. Either way, it starts out with a massive DDR5 price drop. Nvidia's 4060 sucks more power than the 3070. They finally show off the desktop Arc GPU, and we have performance on Intel's big Arc GPU. But before I get to that, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell so you get notifications when my videos are released. We've got a lot of big news coming up, Intel's Arc of course, then the RTX 4000 cards, RX 7000, tons of news coming up in the next few months, so like I said, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we have a really interesting story from Computer Base. As you can see, it mentions memory prices, and when we go down here, it says the DDR5 now starts at less than five euros per gigabyte, and that's actually a really big deal because that's actually a 20% decrease in just four weeks. So in one month, DDR5 prices have dropped by as much as 20%, and that's a massive drop from the end of 2021, where it was actually almost 15 euros per gigabyte. So thank goodness, yet another thing is going down in price, and it couldn't happen any sooner, just because we pretty well already know that AMD's Ryzen 7000 CPUs are likely going to require DDR5. And of course, unlike Intel, higher memory speeds typically translates to faster CPUs with Ryzen, the reason being that the Infinity Fabric interconnect is tied to memory speed. Though of course, there are limits to that, it can only get so high before it has issues, but AMD has decoupled the memory from the Infinity Fabric. Once it reaches a certain point, you can kind of stop it from being 1-1, but each generation, we have seen Infinity Fabric being able to get faster and faster. So obviously, faster memory is very important to Ryzen. And next up for today, we have some pretty wild news. If you can see right here, this comes from Copi7 Kimmy, and right now he states that the TGP of the 4090 is still sort of a mystery. It has an opportunity to reach 600 watts, so he isn't 100% sure that it actually will be 600 watts. With that said, he does state that it's possible the 4080 has a 420 watt TGP which if you didn't know, when we look at the 3080, well, the uh, 10 gigabyte model, so just the original 3080 that was released, that is 100 watts higher. So definitely a fairly large jump, but when we move down even lower, it gets even scarier. As you can see right here, he states, he talks about the release date, says he's not 100% sure, at least as far as the RTX 4060, but he's more caring about performance, which apparently consumes more power than the 3070. So once again, we are seeing really big power draw numbers from Nvidia's next gen GPUs. I mean, we're talking the lower end card is set to get more power draw, require more power than the hiring card of last gen. So that is certainly a massive jump in power consumption. And next up for today, for anyone hoping to purchase a Meteor Lake CPU, I have some bad news for you. For those who don't know, the Meteor Lake S CPU is set to be the desktop CPU for Intel's next generation products after Raptor Lake. And don't forget, Raptor Lake is set to come sometime later this year, so Meteor Lake will likely release sometime next year. Well, the bad news, uh, really quickly I will actually say this, originally there was a leak from Moore's Law is Dead, effectively stating that the socket was the LGA 2551, but as they say right here, it looks like the number exists, but it's probably a BGA packaged product. And I will say to his credit, he does make a correction to that, and he actually states that he is hearing now that it is not uh, the LGA 2551, that in fact, it is an LGA 1851. And one of the big differences is that the length and width dimensions are the same as the current LGA 1700. Now, that may sound like good news, but unfortunately, it 
doesn't really matter if it's the 2551 or 1851, because either way, especially given 1851, shows us that it has more pins. It is not, at least according to this, going to work on older LGA 1700 motherboards. We can see right here, both Meteor Lake and Air Lake will not be compatible with LGA 1700 Alder Lake S or Raptor Lake S motherboards. And of course, I can hear from a lot of you saying, oh, that's obvious, Intel has always done this. But the issue is that we are hearing from AMD that once again, their AM5 platform is set to last as long as, if not longer, than their AM4 platform. So you would think Intel would do something to be more competitive with this, so when you purchase a CPU for their new platform, it should last you for quite a while. But apparently that is not the case. And next up for today, we finally get to see Intel's Arc GPU. The GPU was spotted at Intel's Extreme Masters Gaming event, and as you can see, it is that limited edition GPU that we saw a little while back. Now, unfortunately, we aren't sure exactly which GPU this is, if it's an A770 or maybe an A780, but regardless, this is at least somewhat, I guess you could say, Intel's reference design, though from what we're hearing, it will likely only come for one GPU. Like I said, either A770 or some kind of special edition A780. Either way, it looks pretty much exactly like what we've seen from that trailer in Intel shared a little while back, but it's nice to see the GPU in actual images. And when we look right here, I actually have it right here, if we zoom in, you can see that it is an 8-pin and 6-pin connector. So obviously that would give you an idea of the power draw we can expect. And next up, I will say pretty quickly, there was actually a gameplay demo of an Intel Arc GPU-powered Nook at the DreamHack Dallas this last weekend. And I'll show you that video right now. You can see that he is playing a game. Unfortunately, it doesn't really give us any numbers, but we do have some numbers that are really interesting in today's final story. As you can see right here, we have Intel's Arc A730M, which really quickly I will say is not their most powerful GPU. Their most powerful GPU has around 33% more cores, much faster graphics clock, more memory, a faster memory bus width, so it should be significantly faster than what we're seeing here. And yet, this A730M, which we see on the Mechanic laptop, that it receives in 3D Mark's time spy 10,107. Now, that's seriously impressive because when we compare it to NVIDIA's, let's see, 3070 right here, you can see that it beats it out. In fact, that even gets fairly close to the 3070 Ti. Not only that, but the company themselves, this is Mike and Ike, I believe it is, yeah, Mike and Ike, sorry, you can see in their promotion, they show a little bit of a lower score, but that still is higher than the 3070. You can see 9663 versus 10,002. So that is a little bit better, but the 3D Mark's Fire Strike score is a little bit worse. You can see it's 23,090, I believe it was. Then we have the 3070, that's 25,000. So it's a little bit faster. So it looks to be right around a 3070 notebook GPU. And while that may not seem that great, once again, remember that this is a mobile GPU and it is not the fastest. Their fastest one should be significantly faster. So Intel's upcoming Arc GPUs could really be quite a bit faster than we originally thought. Of course, none of that will really matter if they keep waiting for the release, because if the 4000 series and RX 7000 series come out first, their Alchemist GPUs are almost certainly dead on arrival. Still, at least for now, this is very interesting and very promising for Intel's first real jump into the discrete GPU market. So while that does it for today, what do you think about these scores for Intel's Arc GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.